Um, I'm Aditi Nair and I'm the Chief People Officer at Practice. Uh, so this is the fourth webinar in the series. So we started off the first of the uh, of these series in a Feb last in the Feb in the beginning of this year. And uh, this is the fourth one. Uh, we are really happy to have you all here. Um, before we get into the call, uh, just a few basic hygiene requirements from the audience. Uh, request you all to please keep yourselves on mute uh, during the uh, webinar. Uh, there is a restriction on the gallery view. Uh, so apart from the panelists, I uh, would request all other participants to keep their uh, videos uh, turned off during this webinar. Uh, if you have any questions that you would like to address to the panel, uh, you can use the chat box and we'll take it, take them up during the second half of the webinar. Uh, so on today's topic, uh, for many of us who are either just starting off with our careers or we are at a crossroad in our career where we are trying to decide between uh, is it a specialist role that we should do or continue with a generalist, generalist role, um, this webinar will try and answer that query for you. Um, we have an esteemed uh, panel with us today uh, who will help us to uh, uh, help us to answer these questions. Uh, before we start off a little about practice, uh, so practice was known as my CFO earlier. Um, we work we work with over 900 organizations and we deliver measurable ROI through uh, our office of CFO, uh, performance improvement and business transformation services. Uh, we have about 220 plus industry experienced finance professionals who are based out of offices in India, uh, New York, as well as Dubai. Uh, last year, we went in for the Great Place to Work certification and are uh, really happy to let you all know that we are a Great Place to Work certified. Um, and we also rank in one of India's great mid-size workplaces for 2022. Uh, before we go further into the webinar, uh, we have a quick poll coming up. Uh, so I'll uh, just request my colleague Murtaza to share the poll with the audience. Uh, let's see what our audience feels about uh, being either a specialist or a generalist. Uh, in today's uh, world. Uh, Muntza, can we have the poll? So the audience can uh, respond uh, whether, what is it that you all feel? Uh, is it a generalist or a, sp a specialist that you'd like to be? Uh, so I, think, I don't know if it's an issue for everybody else, but I'm not able to read the whole sentence actually on the screen. Okay. Do you want to just uh, read it out? Yeah, I'll read it out. Uh, so between a generalist and a finance role, uh, what is it that you would like to choose a, as a career option? Uh, would you like to be a generalist and have an array of functional expertise? Or would you like to be a specialist and prefer to have in-depth in -depth experience in finance function? So are we ready with the result? Yeah. So seventy-seven of the seventy-seven percent of the people say generalists. Uh, I'd like to have an array of function expertise under my belt, and twenty-three percent of the people say specialists. I'd like. I'd prefer to have in-depth experience in our functions of finance. OK, so currently we are seeing generalists are weighing uh, out the specialists. Let's see how we feel uh, towards the end of this webinar. Uh, thanks for that, Murtaza. Um, we'll go ahead. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, to the audience today uh, our host, my co-host for the webinar, uh, S. Venkat Raman, or Venkat as he's popularly known. Uh, he co-founded Practice Advisors uh, in 2004. Uh, he's a chartered accountant, a uh, cost and management accountant, and a risk manager. Um, he started his career with PwC, uh, where he worked for about eight years. Uh, 
uh, and was appointed later as a CFO of Aon's Indian subsidiary just when he was 28 years old. So a very young CFO. Um, Venkat actively mentors uh, young professionals both within and outside practice. Uh, uh, some of us have really uh, benefited from the advice he gives us, uh, very valuable development inputs as well as career guidance. Um, he plays an instrumental role in giving direction to our people's strategy at practice. Um, I'm sure that all of us on this webinar will benefit a lot from uh, Venkat's perspectives. Uh, grateful, uh, Venkat, if you could introduce our uh, panelists today and commence our session. Uh, sure. Thank you, Aditi. Uh, so a quick round of introduction to Aditi. Uh, Aditi is our chief people officer, and she has been instrumental in helping us get hold of the great place towards certification and award. Um, a quick introduction to why are we doing this session, guys, is, uh, you know, we get a lot of questions from young finance professionals, uh, especially from the specialists, right? There are a lot of us who are probably kind of, uh, say, into a tax role or uh, someone who's kind of got specialized now into a treasury and uh, a forex management role. There are some of us who are corporate finance specialists. And the question that often comes is, look, you know, should I be kind of going deeper into this function and building the expertise and becoming world class in that? I mean, is that going to enhance my market value? Or as we kind of keep climbing up the corporate hierarchy, is it important for me to kind of start acquiring uh, other skills within the finance function? And it could be like controllership, could be fp and a business finance, uh, is, is that the way uh, to kind of fast track your growth? So we recognize that, that probably there is no right or wrong answer. And when we decided to kind of put together this panel, uh, the idea was to see how we can leverage uh, a cross section of perspectives and experiences that could be useful to you, right? To clarify, we are not looking at, uh, uh, we are looking specifically at the finance function only. So we're going to be looking at some functions uh, within finance. We're not kind of really looking at the trade off between moving from finance into production or moving from finance into HR, et cetera, right? There's a thought we'll kind of clarify that uh, part of the agenda upfront, right? So uh, if I can first start with uh, introducing uh, uh, Mohita. Uh, who uh, heads uh, talent management for Pidelite. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Mohita. Uh, uh, you know, the one thing I was struck uh, with uh, when I was talking to all our panelists is just their variety of interests uh, in life and uh, how how multidimensional uh, all these personalities are. Uh, Mohita has, of course, kind of worked with LNT Infotech, with uh, Global Trust Bank, uh, with Kotak Mahindra Bank, and with CIAT. Uh, before joining Pidelite, uh, you know, in this world of social media and LinkedIn, I'm going to leave it to you to kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, check her profile out. Uh, you know, I think on the personal front, um, uh, Mohita is extremely involved with yoga and meditation. Uh, she plays a very active role in facilitating uh, conversations and training programs for volunteers at both Isha Foundation as well as the Aga Khan Foundation. Uh, Mohita is both a passionate cook as well as a gardener. Uh, very interestingly, she is also kind of a specialist in graphology, uh, which is the science of uh, reading your personality by looking at your uh, signature. Uh, in addition to this, uh, Mohita is an adventure sports uh, buff, uh, particularly with uh, scuba diving. And uh, if all this was not enough, if these feathers were not enough on her cap, uh, she also does uh, alternate healing. Uh, so she's very active with both NLP as well as EFT. Um, I understood that Mohita is also kind of um, uh, taking up a course to be certified as a facilitator uh, in the IAF. Uh, what really touched me about Mohita is her purpose uh, of life, which is to live life to uh, her fullest potential and also enabling others uh, to do the same. Uh, with regard to uh, literature, uh, she likes Eckhart Tolle and she's currently reading a book by him and she loves all, all sorts of music genres, but currently she's more into Sufi. Uh, so delighted to have a very uh, multi-faceted personality on the panel today. Thank you once again, Mohita, for joining in. Yeah, I'd now like to introduce uh, Deepal Shah. Uh, Deepal Shah is the uh, Deputy Group CFO at All Cargo uh, Logistics. Uh, he has worked earlier with uh, uh, with ITH and uh, with DHL, uh, post which uh, he has been a CEO uh, of one of All Cargo's uh, subsidiaries, before, which was earlier called as Hindustan Cargo. And now, of course, he kind of heads the finance function for All Cargo. Um, again, a very multidimensional type of a personality. Uh, Deepal loves people. 
uh, he has been is visited almost every country in the world. So on his bucket list uh, is uh, taking a tour uh, on a on a luxury cruise to Antarctica. So that is what he's kind of looking to do uh, next on the on the travel front. Um, he he loves to watch uh, videos uh, kind of relating to nature. And uh, uh, what inspires him most is to kind of go to places from where the view is unparalleled. Uh, so one of the things on his bucket list is whether he can get to the top of Mount Everest. So for those of us who are kind of aspiring for big goals in life, I think lots to learn from uh, the way Deepak has set, kind of set his own aspirations and goals. Uh, Deepak is a sports buff. Uh, but he is somebody who likes to play the sport, not just watch it. Uh, he loves racket sports uh, in particular. So he is uh, he plays tennis, squash, and currently is more into badminton. He's a movie buff. Uh, he likes Gladiator. That's his uh, one of his all-time uh, favorite movies. Uh, he likes Guru. And he's also, like me, a James Bond uh, buff. So he mentioned that he has seen Skyfall, I, I don't know, maybe seven or eight times. So I've done the same. Uh, so... Uh, so I, I think that's uh, that's something that we share, Deepal. So really good to know about that. The other thing that uh, Deepal likes is good food. And, um, you know, one of the things uh, that again touched me about Deepal is his ability to kind of uh, 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 experience the entire uh, gamut of situations without feeling perturbed about it. You know, so uh, again, something that I strongly believe in, um, that, uh, you know, he is quite comfortable having something on the roadside. Uh, you know, it could be a tapri chai, maybe it's a pani puri stall that he mentioned in car, and equally is comfortable in a five star environment. Uh, so something uh, you know, which is a phenomenal trait to have, right? Kind of shows how how grounded you are. Uh, one of his favorite uh, foods is uh, black dal at uh, Peshavari at ITC Maratha, right? So a tip: anybody who's kind of trying to get some time with him, maybe you should drop in over a weekend at ITC. Maybe you'll you will be able to see him. Uh, the one thing, uh, Deepal, that will be very interesting in particular to kind of uh, hear your perspective is, you know, it's very interesting that you actually played a CEO role before, right? So you kind of clearly got a cross-functional view and, uh, you know, you, I'm, I'm sure you're kind of seeing the career paths of multiple people uh, who have kind of gone from being specialist to generalist and vice versa, right? So I think that perspective, if you can kind of bring to the table, that will be great. Yeah. But once again, thank you for making time over a weekend to join us today, Deepal. Thank you, Venkat, for having me. Thank you. Yeah, I would uh, now like to uh, uh, to introduce our third uh, panelist, uh, Vaibhav Joshi. So Vaibhav is, uh, again, a very, very interesting personality. He is both CFO and CHRO. Uh, so if there is somebody who's kind of built position to kind of, uh, you know, talk on both the finance and the HR aspects of today's topic, it's probably Vaibhav. Uh, he's worked with Satyam, with Arcel, with Max Range, and now he's with Nefro Plus for about 10 years. Viber has seen the company scale from 10 centers to 300 centers and from 150 people to 4,000 people. So talk about, you know, the scale up of a startup. I mean, he's pretty much kind of lived the journey uh, personally. Uh, Vaibhav is, uh, again, a food buff and um, he follows Kunal Kapoor quite passionately. And uh, what he likes to make is a veg biryani. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll have an uh, invite to kind of come over home, Vaibhav, and uh, uh, taste uh, the, the biryani that you have made. Uh, he's a runner. Uh, he runs half marathons and he's looking to participate in the uh, Mumbai Marathon. Uh, his favorite pastime is to get on his bike and do 50 kilometer to 100 kilometer um, bike runs. Uh, uh, as, a, as a part of his target, he has now taken on uh, a goal of reading one book per month. He's currently reading a book called Deep Work, uh, which kind of talks about how you should be focused on the more Im impactful activities and not get distracted by the buzz of the day-to-day uh, -day operational uh, chores. Uh, he loves cricket, uh, both seeing as well as playing cricket. Uh, he is also a Bollywood buff. Um, Anand and Shole are his all-time favorites. And incidentally, he has also seen Drishyam 2. For those of you who want a movie review about Drishyam 2, please feel free to ask in the chat box. I'm sure he'll be happy to share his perspective. So once again, very happy to have you, Vaibhav. Uh, thanks for making time. Incidentally, he's joining this call from Manila uh, in Philippines. So we you know, truly appreciate your taking time during an official trip, Vaibhav. Uh, thanks, Venkat. Thanks for the such a delightful interaction and introduction. <laughs> Perfect. So, Aditi, do you want to kick off? Yes. Thank you, Ankar. Uh, a warm welcome to all the panelists once again. Uh, Anuja, can we go to the uh, profile, uh, the two profile series that we are going to share? 
Yeah. Uh, so I thought that before we, uh, you know, get into the actual discussion, we'll uh, look at a couple of uh, very interesting uh, CFO CVs, uh, one of a generalist and one of a specialist. Uh, so uh, these are very young finance professionals who moved up uh, in the career uh, really quickly, and they've both taken very distinct paths to get there. Uh, so Rahul was one of our panelists for our first webinar that we conducted in Feb. Um, if you see his profile, he's largely been uh, in generalist uh, finance roles uh, during his career. So uh, while he started off with Britannia and then moved to Olam, uh, they've largely been uh, generalist roles, uh, finance and commercial uh, manager, uh, financial controller roles, and then he's moved on to uh, uh, a divisional CFO role at Olam, and then he's taken on the CFO role at Swiggy. Uh, so if you see his profile, typically a largely generalist role that's moved into a, a CFO. Uh, the next profile that uh, we thought uh, would be interesting to look at uh, is of Divya. Now, Divya was uh, the first female CFO at General Motors. She's currently CFO at Stripe. Uh, but if you look at her profile again, uh, she's someone who's moved from very, uh, very specialist roles into a, uh, a CFO role. So largely, she's been into investment strategy, fixed income, treasury roles, uh, and has grown uh, into a CFO role. Uh, what is interesting to note uh, between these uh, profiles is that um, uh, Divya has largely grown within General Motors. So she got an opportunity to become a CFO uh, growing within the company. Um, whereas uh, if you see Rahul's CV, he has moved, he's even he's uh, been able to switch careers and take up a CFO role uh, in a new company. Uh, so just thought that these would be good, uh, uh, you know, reference profiles to look at. Uh, before we actually get into uh, some of the uh, questions that we have for our panelists today. Uh, so, Venkat, I'll probably start off with the first two uh, questions and then you can come in uh, for the uh, next couple of sure. minutes. Uh, so, the first question that we thought we'll pose to the panelists is, uh, how does one decide whether they should take a specialist route or a generalist route? Uh, it could be either at the beginning of the career or during a crossroads. Uh, would be really happy if the panelists could uh, take this uh, question and start our discussion. Uh, Mohita, do you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> so, uh, to me, this question is more about knowing where you're going and then ensuring that you do what is required to be done to reach where you have decided to be. Uh, so when I say that, for example, if uh, I know I have to go from Mumbai to Pune, then I can choose various options that I can take. So I've decided that I have to go to Pune, but if I'm not decided, then any road is good. Just like the Alice in Wonderland, the cat says, if you're not sure, then you can take any route. However, what is key is what you like to do, what do you enjoy doing? And where is it that you want to go? So I think these are the things which in my mind are very, very important. So unless and until you know what is there in the specialist or a generalist route, you will not really be able to decide. So in my career, what has helped is that as a generalist, when I was able to move various HR desks and then decide which desk I want to specialize in for a while, it helped me to take that decision whether I want to be a generalist or a specialist. So what is important is that when we start our career, we go with an open mind, just like a river when it starts. It is not too sure of how it will flow down, but it will flow down. So how do you really start exploring, understanding what each of the roles in the finance journey have to offer or the careers or the routes have to offer and then see what you really enjoy doing. And once you figure that out in the first five to seven years of your career, then take a deep dive into being a specialist if that is what attracts you and then see how you want to move ahead. These are some of my thoughts inviting the other panels. Uh, Webber, you'd like to go next? Yeah, so <clears throat> I just want to add on from where Mohita has left. I think at the start of the career, it's more important that uh, the role which you are playing and you do it to the best of your knowledge and abilities. I think that is where this entire journey starts. And I think uh, most of the times rather than 
thinking about what is specialist versus what is generalist, what is good for the business, what is right for the business. I think wearing that hat is very, very important. And if you are keep as a support function, I would say finance has all the data available, all the information available. And if you are doing right thing for the organization, I, I don't think so whether you are a specialist or a generalist, uh, you'll get there, uh, whatever is the top of the hierarchy, I would say. And generally initial two, three years, you, uh, even though you would like to be the generalist, but initial two, three years, somebody starts their journey from a treasury function, somebody from MIS, somebody from fp and a somebody from uh, financial reporting frameworks, regulatory compliance and all. But do things with more of a common sense and uh, do things which is, I think a lot many times we get into these roles, but in my opinion, uh, having a good business quotient, having a good dhanda quotient is more important to get that uh, to get that position. And in my opinion, that first three four years is that depth is important. But after four or five years, you need to know all the functions, how things are happening, how things are moving forward. So my answer is not yes or no. My answer is in between there. That initial route is more of a specialist uh, to get in and then more of a generalist role. Thanks, Vaibhav. Uh, Deepal, would you like to share your thoughts as well? Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I think I could kind of echo, uh, you know, uh, some thoughts, uh, both from Moita and uh, Vaibhav. Uh, I think it's very important for when you're starting your career, it's very important to do what you like. I think you know your your ability to kind of uh, uh, decide what you really like to do. Uh, also, in the long run, if you want to be a generalist, um, I think um, you have to be the best in what you like. You know, you have to be. You just can't. You know, in today's uh, day and age, you you have to be an expert. You know, uh, in 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 something at least to to get up the corporate ladder. So it's it's very important to prove your metal in in a particular field, uh, a functional expertise uh, that you are. And then as you climb up, you know you learn things around you, right? You learn other, uh, you know, uh, you know, areas which you know ne not necessarily be your functional expertise. And then that's how how you grow, you know. That's how you climb up. But uh, uh, I I would suspect that you know starting purely as a generalist and and you know. Uh, making a mark purely as a generalist uh, um, at uh, a particular position and going from there would be a tough uh, way way up uh, if you were to do. Uh, also, I would also like to uh, kind of uh, put a caveat here is that uh, it is very individualistic, you know, choice. A lot of people love what they do, right? Some people love treasury and for example, right, and they just say that I just don't care. I'm I love my job. I, I just don't want to be a generalist. Yeah, I I want to I want to do what I do, and I love doing that. So there's no right or wrong answer. But um, if you have a long term plan to to go at the top of the ladder in the corporate world, you have to in the long run be a general generalist, and obviously you have to start being the best. To get recognition, to get depth in, in a particular function. That's how I see it. Uh, and that's my view. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'd like to add to that, Aditi. Uh, I really like the thought that people brought onto the table, which is saying that you have to be really good at something at least. And I think even Venkat said that, uh, you know, some of the spaces you will have to create a mark. Uh, in fact, I heard Rajiv uh, Bajaj some days back in a conference uh, from Bajaj uh, Motors. Uh, what he said was that, you know, when you look at either a surgeon today or you look at a musician today, they are experts in the space that they're doing. They're actually doing the job themselves. And as you go up the hierarchy, there should be some spaces that you should also be an expert. And that will come when you really, really start learning some of the things. And as people said, figuring out what you enjoy and go deeper and deeper into it. And then you can actually expand and move forward. So there is no right formula for anyone, but I think it's a good thing to say that 
the spaces that you enjoy, there'll be a couple of things that you pick up and you become the champions at that so that there is traction that helps you move up the ladder. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Muta, for summing that uh, up. Uh, any other uh, inputs from the panelists before we go to the uh, next question? Okay. Uh, Anuja, can we have the next question up? So uh, this is what we'd like to check with the panelists next. Uh, so if you all can share uh, an example of uh, either a functional specialization or an industrial specialization, and maybe uh, uh, an example of a successful finance uh, professional in your network who's moved either from a generous role to a specialist role or from a specialist role to a generous role um, and have been able to deliver well uh, at uh, whichever roles they've taken up. So if you all can... Uh, help us with some example. Maybe we could start off with uh, Deepal for this one and then uh, check if he has an, any inputs before we go to the next panelist. Yeah, sure. Um, um, I have my personal journey to talk about here. Um, so I, I started off as a finance, a CFO. I mean, uh, started off as, as a finance uh, person, then moved up the ladder, became a CFO. Then actually did manage business for 11 year, odd years, coming back to be in, into the group as a CFO um, for the group function. So I, I've flip flopped, you know, from from one side to the other side. I, I understand Venkat mentioned that um, we're not talking about outside of finance roles at the moment. We are talking about more within finance, uh, being a uh, generalist or uh, specialist. But I think, um, again, I, I think, uh, skill sets change um so i you know uh i, I think uh, what i would like to mention over here is that um, it's when you're a generalist i think the skill sets are slightly different uh, than when you are a specialist you know specialist is very very knowledge driven uh a very very depth the depth that you require uh, is is much more when you're a generalist what you actually need is is ability to manage situations and people better. I think I think that's that's from a mindset perspective. You know you have to understand what which one you are. So uh, I'll give you a um, um, uh, few examples. You know I I've seen a lot of people who kind of have been specialist in in their particular field, um, and have loved to be there and have grown to a particular level but have never kind of moved beyond to a very general level uh, unfortunately I'm, I'm not answering the question directly as an example but i'm just giving you some perspectives uh, unfortunately uh, uh, and i'm going to be very i mean call, going to call this out very clearly unfortunately in many organizations and why rampant i would say i i see some very senior hr people here but uh, i'm sure i hope it's not put in the mouth but for me but, um, you know, moving from a specialist to a generalist, you know, is considered in some organization as a factor of time that, you know, you became a manager, senior manager, and then suddenly you move to a general manager role, right? And, you know, general manager actually means a lot more. And it's a factor of time, how much time you spend with the organization. And it's a, see it as a natural transition. But, but many organizations traditionally used to follow that formula, but uh, it's not that. Uh, to become a generalist, you, your skill sets are very different. So, uh, uh, I have uh, example wise, I think um, I can quote myself. Uh, I know it's it's slightly different, but I was a CFO, and obviously, you know, uh, I started to get get myself involved in many other things other than than finance. You know, I looked after sales, business, uh, because when you are at a CFO level, it's more strategic as you get along. And slowly, you know, over a period of time, I transited out into, into a CEO role. So I did everything, right? So I was a specialist in finance. People used to look up to me for finance. But at the same time, I also learned many other skill sets, you know, learned, you know, a bit of uh, HR, sales, ops, uh, learned the business well. So I think that example, uh, I think one can quote. And of course, um, same example, um, you know, when they wanted somebody at the group level for finance, they said that, you know, people, you know, finance well, and why don't you take up that position? So from being a journalist, I flipped back into uh, finance. <clears throat> and I, I, I must admit that uh, it took a little bit of unlearning and relearning as well. Um, but, but I think 
it's mindset you know your uh, you know how how you you really think um, uh, you know you want to you know uh, span, uh, you know pan your career out in the future uh, is this how it will work so i'll pause here because i've just given a very generic uh, <clears throat> outline of of uh, uh, how it should be thanks for that people uh weba we want to come in next or uh... Maybe yeah. some inputs from you. Yeah, so I think Deepal has very well articulated the points, but I have seen many examples who are more of a generalist and who are more of a specialist. So few of my friends, I have seen that they are OK to be a specialist. And why a specialist that they feel that if you want to get, go, go into depth, there is not much of a people's related challenges. They need to create their knowledge base and in terms of team size also it's not that big two to three members team decent work life balance and they are good at what they are doing and they are content and happy with it also so what is your life's north star also depends that uh, would you like to be a generalist or a specialist uh, at a certain point of time after 10 to 15 years of professional career i would say and uh, if uh, i would say that they like that thing, they are doing it and they are fairly successful in what they are doing. So in terms of area of specialization, they are good and they are quite content with uh, more of an individual contributor role or two, three members, a small team and that specific function. But on the other side, uh, in terms of generalist role and as we grow being as uh, last 10 years back versus 10 to 15 years back versus expectation from the CFOs are entirely different. They are more like a, they are no more a bean counter. They are more of a person who strategize, who, who have numbers on their fingertips and who need to be a growth partner to the CEO. And at the same point of time, take care of the governance hat also while uh, dealing with the board of directors. So, so those kind of a roles, more of a, I would say a generalist role uh, require a lot of time and bandwidth and uh, that is something where a lot of people's management thing, other things comes into the place and the people have moved from CEO to CFO role. He has seen the entire gamut and I am also taking care of CHRO role, CFO role and other things. So I would say that we have seen a lot of, lot of people, but what they like is more important. And People is comfortable being CEO, CFO. I am also comfortable taking wearing two hats at the same point of time. So this is more about a personal choice where you would like to be at the end of the day. But yeah, means in terms of what is the success is measured based on the individual. We are not here to define the parameter of success because for us, for many people, success is like that. Seeing their kids growing and spending quality time and doing what they are liking. So a decent work life balance for them. For some, it is more about the professional aspirations be on top of the game every time. OK to have a little bit compromise on the family side or a personal side. So I think these are the two perspectives I would share as far as this uh, uh, successful finance professional. So all are successful, I would say, because after 15, 20 years in the industry, if they are surviving and growing, then uh, everybody has a different parameter. If they are ticking the tick boxes which they have chosen for their success, they are successful. I'll sum it up that way. Very true, Vaiva. I think uh, I think we can relate to what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Mohita, you would like to add something? Yeah, I think uh, very rightly said, Vaiva. It's career is an individual's career, and each one needs to take the responsibility and ownership, and at the same time, keep in mind what what career means to you. In fact, uh, we're currently doing a study as to what careers means for millennials. And very interestingly, each one has a very different stake today at what career really is. However, this question saying that one example of functional specialization. So I know a person who decided to stay in the tire industry, you know, just like HR professionals, I would say finance professionals also have the flexibility to move industries as well. You know, there is nothing which stops them. And you know, working with a consulting framework or a consulting organization gives you that exposure beautifully. Uh, however, that person decided to stay with the tire industry, and 
initially first few years he focused on the functional specialization which is on the commercial pnl profit and loss aspect because he realized that that is something which was the core it is the backbone if you understand and going back to what uh, you know we have started saying here that you know what you do should add value to the business so he realized that the moment you are in the commercial aspect you are act, talking about the pnl you're talking about business profitability it is going to impact the business very clearly so he chose that that he's going to stay in that space in the industry which is tired and then he actually deepened his knowledge so much that he became an expert there and the question is now he is a cfo for one of the subsidiaries in the rpg group but how did he really move is where he took charge of his career he realized that what are the aspects that are required his destination was clear to him that he wanted to be a cfo but he knew that if he is able to build and add value to business every meeting became very very important for him he took charge of his career looked at which roles will give him that exposure and would go back to the managers to talk about his career next choices every 2 to 2 and a half years so that he is able to move up and if you are performing you are delivering and you are taking charge of your career organizations will definitely give you that chance in fact you need to take charge of your career and it, take it in your hands don't wait for anybody else to craft it out for you is what my experience and observations have been as an hr professional who manages talent as well thank you thanks mohita uh, so it was interesting to hear uh, the perspectives on uh, and the examples that you all shared uh, uh, on this question uh, i'll just check with venkat if he wants to come in and uh, to take us to the next uh, three questions yeah, sure i have i'm happy to do that um yeah, you know just on this question itself um, if you look at the panelists as well i think uh, and i want to kind of focus a little bit on the industry specialization part right and how does that impact the uh, ability to kind of move jobs uh, so someone like deepal right i mean clearly been in <coughs> in the in the logistics business uh, if i can call it i mean if you could include uh, international travel house uh, as as uh, as a related logistics industry as well uh, but clearly both dhl and all cargo uh, you know you have been very specialized in that line whereas if you look at uh, mohita's career i mean she's kind of started with the software business uh, and then moved into banking and then come into manufacturing right i mean the business models are very different uh, in fact uh, even for vibhav uh, started with uh, software and then moved into telecom and then into retail and now into healthcare services right so uh, one question deepal is uh, that um, uh, you know for say a specialist uh, like you who has kind of been in one industry uh, does it kind of become a constraining factor at some point that it becomes very hard for you to kind of move into other industries you know because uh, recruiters are basically saying that look you know you you are kind of probably too into one particular industry vertical for you to be able to be successful in some other vertical uh, yeah venkat so yeah i think uh, maybe um, few years back i think that was the mindset most of recruiters had that we want somebody um, who's very industry domain expert you know in terms of specialism but we are seeing a lot of change you know we are seeing people in fact uh, looking for people from outside of industry because you know finance at the top more particularly is becoming more strategic it's it's no more uh, you know so what happens is you know new ideas you know new ways of doing things cross pollination of of uh, you know ideas from other industries also help so we see what we are seeing is a lot of uh, a lot of change in the thought process but yes uh, i must admit that uh, recruiters and companies to some extent are skewed um, towards uh, you know i mean uh, recruiting especially from from that industry or or in thereabouts uh, to some extent but i think um, um, if it's a pure operational job uh, i think it, it it works but but when you go to a more generalist role i think it really doesn't matter that is what my view is and i think a lot of recruiters or companies also in hr per se is, is also expanding their horizon in terms of uh, hiring from other industries uh, i i should say that we we have ceos coming from from vodafone which is a completely different industry for us right uh, so 
uh, and and we see uh, today the ability for people to learn quickly uh, is very high. You know, the amount of information uh, explosion that, and the information that is available for people uh, uh, it, it's, it's quite a bit. See, way back, I think um, I, I'm going to take a minute more. Uh, uh, you know, this whole specialization and the whole thing way back was, I think knowledge was was limited. Information was limited and you learn your, your learning curve was very long, you know, for a particular industry. So you learn, you grow in that particular industry, and then you un, you if you were to go to someone else, uh, some other industry, it takes a much longer period. And and you know um, that's not what many people wanted to do. But things have changed, you know, with the you know the entire uh, the availability of information at your fingertips, ability to learn. And the, the learning curve has become very fast. So I don't think so that. Um, that's true, and I don't think that's going to be true anymore uh, in the long run. Uh, I think people are changing their their approach to uh, industry specialization, uh, unless it's very much uh, a niche and a special industry which requires special skill sets. Uh, that's how I I would put it. I'm sorry, Venkat, for the longish answer, but I thought I'll it take more context to 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 uh, uh, give uh, what I mean to say. Yeah, for sure. I think this is very helpful, uh, Deepal. Thanks for that perspective. Actually, this kind of dovetails in quite nicely to the next question uh, as well. And I'm probably going to put you on the spot, uh, Mohita, a little bit, uh, right? And um, so, for instance, you know, when uh, when when you were uh, interviewing at Seat, um, okay, uh, you, you had no manufacturing experience at that point, right? But Seat still kind of took a leap of faith. So, do you subscribe to Deepal's view that it is really about a company's assessment? Uh, of whether the individual has got the ability to kind of learn and adapt and get into the role is is that what is uh, uh, your learning uh, but also equally let me kind of flip the question that when you are recruiting uh, let's say at uh, pity light would you be kind of happy to kind of take someone who comes from say a pure software services background say in a controllership role or in a business finance or fpna role uh, so you know while you were speaking you know the thought which is coming to my mind or what I've heard all these years in HR is that we hire for attitude uh, and then we train for the job. You know, so thankfully, when I was looking at Seat, uh, they looked at whether I fit into the organization culture far more than really looking at whether I had the industry background or not. So that's where it is today. Uh, Organizations like today, when I hire, I really hire for the attitude. I look at the kind of learnings a person has drawn uh, and how the person has applied those learnings rather than whether it is an industry or no. So you, if you know the method, you can find answers to anything. So that's where I have been and I have, and that's how I hire today. So that's that's my answer, Venkat. Uh, yeah, just to sorry, Venkat, just to add, Moita, very lovely said. I think you know attitude is very important. You know, I think uh, what I have also learned is that uh, uh, you can you can you know develop uh, you know skill sets you know for that industry, but if you don't have the attitude for it, it really doesn't work. So attitude is extremely important. Full marks for that, I think. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Weber, if we can come to you on this question, right? Um, uh, if you were to kind of pick one specific advantage and one specific disadvantage now going down the specialization route uh, in terms of two things, there are two dimensions here. One is career growth. I mean, how quickly can you move within the organization uh, to higher levels? And second is what is your ability to kind of move from uh, one job to another job? Maybe it's a lateral uh, kind of a move. Uh, right? So I, uh, for instance, I came across a, a very senior gentleman works at a very large Indian conglomerate. Uh, extremely good at raising funding, uh, right? And um, he's kind of raised funds locally, internationally, uh, you know, knows uh, virtually every single banker, um, understands currency rate movements, interest rate movements like any, like like nobody else. But he's now kind of spent about 20, 25 years in this line. And his input to me was that, look, now the only other place where I can go is maybe some other large Indian conglomerate, uh, which requires uh, similar fundraising skills. But his ability to kind of move into a CFO role, he felt was severely compromised, right? So is is, is that your uh, learning? I mean, are you able to kind of tell us one plus and one minus of going down the specialization route? So uh, 
I means this is more on a person to person how they think about it, Venkat. And in my opinion, that uh, specialization generally helps. And till the time means as Mohita has also told that in any prospective hire, they see the attitude, what attitude people are carrying and what value they are bringing. And some of the times it happens like that you have not done some job because you have never got that job. And like uh, if you say in film industry also lot many actors are characterized as as that they can do comedy only they can do serious roles only and it's like I would say there is a there is a loop there where uh, if you are good at it people start believing that you can do only that job so it depends on the circumstances it depends on your personal choices what are the things which will help you out. But I feel that any kind of a specialization like uh, in my career also I have raised four to five rounds of equity and three to four rounds of debt. But at the same point of time working towards business, taking business to the next level, how we can grow, how we can do product innovation and also all these things help. So in terms of getting a practical ex example, if you say I have not seen major challenges if you have any kind of a specialization because it's like this. Uh, if you are uh, if person is uh, if you talk about certain all rounders in cricket, they have one very good skill. Either they are very good batsman or they are very good baller and that another skill complements or another skill. Uh, I would say cement their position in the team. So so I have seen advantages of specialization even though if you are having a generalist role. And I have seen people moving faster those and lot many companies I have seen uh, the example which we have given lot many company feels that if you are good at fundraising it means that you are good in selling it means you are good in storytelling rest of the things you can do it rest of the skill controllership and all can be taught on the ground once you spend five to six months in the business. So that is what my take about this entire thing. I'm not sure whether I was able to answer your question or not, but sure. yeah, this is what I have learned in last few years. Got it. Any additional thoughts on this, uh, Deepal, Mohita? So uh, when I look at it, uh, thanks for sharing, Vaibhav, and I think that's just very, very valid. Uh, so specialization helps because it helps you definitely get an expertise, but what you learn along with it and what you want to do with that is important. So everything has every coin has two sides. So even specialization, what I would say is if I were to just list down like an academician uh, advantages and disadvantages per se. So advantages is that you can actually create a brand for yourself, which can be very, very powerful because if you've really created and you're standing out as an expert, that brand will help you reach higher heights. Uh, at the same time, the disadvantage is that, you know, if you are a niche player or your specialization is so specific, not every organization could afford you. Not every organization can give you those uh, returns that you are looking at from a specialization. However, there are streams, for example, moving out of finance and R&D led space. The specialization pays hugely. However, does that happen really in finance space? Yes or no. That is something that you would need to figure out for yourself. And it all depends on where you want to go. But definitely specialization opens far lesser doors as compared to a generalist is what I have realized. And at the same time, on an advantage, if you enjoy managing large people, complexities, then specialization may not really give you that expertise, that exposure. And however, on the other side, if you love to you know, just be with yourself, you want to focus on your work-life balance, uh, you are an expert, you know, uh, and that is what will give you that satisfaction. Then specialization is the rule. So you don't have to know everything, but that what you know is far more valuable. So it's about knowing where to hit the hammer becomes far more important, which is the root cause analysis, which the specialization really offers at the end of the day. So it's about an individual choice. It's about what you want to drive for yourself as a career. And then everything has advantages, disadvantages. It really depends on what you want and what you focus on. Sure. 
So somewhere, uh, you know, the takeaway on this point seems to be that uh, it's determined by what you define as as uh, success, right? So do you kind of see, do, do you see yourself as a future CFO of PD Uh, You know, is that your goal in life or you're seeing yourself as maybe head of corporate finance at Mahindra Go? I mean, is, is that the uh, definition of success, right? And once you define that, then probably uh, uh, the answer to this question is maybe kind of staring uh, uh, by itself at your face. And if I can go to the uh, next question, and I think you, uh, and if I can request uh, Deepal's uh, input here, uh, I, I think you actually uh, alluded to this point a little bit earlier in the conversation, I think Deepal, right? That if uh, the goal, especially is to kind of become a CFO, uh, then, you know, while while you could start your career as a specialist, uh, eventually there will be no alternative but to kind of move into uh, a generalist role. So, you know, would you say that if, and I'm kind of specifically looking at someone who is kind of defining success in terms of becoming a CFO at an early age, uh, then do you think that this is the question of specialist generalist is really more a matter of timing? It's not, it's not about if it will happen, it is about when it needs to happen. Um, so uh, I have a couple of views here. One is I think it's all about the mindset. I think, uh, you know, uh, so um, I think today the world is getting very, very complex. So in, earlier, you know, generalist, even at the CFO level, you have to go down to very complex, uh, you know, problems uh, you have very complex problems and you have to actually go down and understand from in, in a lot of depth you know you actually become a specialist when your problem hits you you know you have to actually have that the width and the depth sometimes as well you know you need both so uh, uh, so senior level you have to be a generalist uh, so let's understand you know i think specialist versus generalist on a generalist you know, is that you are, you grow from being a specialist. So obviously you, you have, you know, uh, uh, have a fairly good amount of uh, depth in, in particular subjects, in particular uh, field, and then you grow to become a generalist. When you're a generalist, I think apart from the depth in some fields, you also have to look at ability to manage people and ability to manage situations. So these are two important things and it's the mindset. Uh, if you are, have a mindset which is very knowledge driven, very kind of, uh, you know, uh, you love what you, you're doing and you don't want to do anything else, then you should continue to be a specialist and you become a specialist at the top of that organization till wherever it goes. But if you were to be the role of a CFO, more particularly, or a senior level, you know, at, at a senior level in finance or for that matter, HR or IT. But I give a, a classic example. Today, CFOs, uh, uh, so much of digitization is happening. So most of the C CFOs are actually half, uh, you know, technology officers as well. You know, I mean, you just cannot not be a technology guy if you are a CFO, right? You will be lost. So. I think lines as you go up, up the chart, the lines start blurring in, blurring, you know, so you are a, you are a little bit of specialist, uh, but your ability to manage people, if you love managing people and if you love managing situations, uh, okay, you have, you should go to a general, generalist path, which takes you all the way to the top. But like, if you aren't, you, there's, but yes, uh, it's fair to say that, um, um, at senior level, finance pro professionals mostly are generalists with, uh, uh, you know, a fairly wide uh, knowledge base, but depth could be a little bit shallow as compared to a specialist in that particular field. That's how I would put it. Understood. So I would like to <clears throat> add up here is that I think uh, I'll second thought means uh, with Deepal what he has said, but width and depth is what Deepal has talked about it. I think team under CFO will take care of the depth part, but in terms of generalist part, uh, important role of CFO or any senior leader is to manage people, manage stakeholders. And that is where I feel that 
mostly journalists will go there at later point of time because at the end of the day, if you talk about CFO is a fiduciary role where he need to take care of the business, he need to take care of governance, he need to take care of compliance, he need to take care of shareholders also. So this is like wearing multiple hats and in my opinion, if you are having too much depth, you might miss that important element is about stakeholders management or people's management and uh, shareholder will have a different expectations. Investors will uh, uh, employees will have a different expectations. Team will have a different expectations. Regulatory and other governance framework will have a different expectation. And most of the time they have their own set of apprehension and securities and all those things. So in that case, uh, just a second. In in that case, it's important to be a journalist, understanding the people and uh, the team of specialists or will help you in navigate if a, if a typical subject matter related questions are arising. Nobody is expecting you to know everything, but everybody expects from CA, CFO to deal with those situations or I would say navigate through that situation. And that is where I feel that generalist role will play in play a critical role. Understood. Uh, Mohita, would you like to come in on this point? I think I completely agree with uh, what I've heard. Just the way I look at it is as a journalist, as a CFO, uh, you have to be a CFO. You are at the higher most level and you need to have a bird's eye view, which can only be possible when you have an exposure into most of the areas and when required, take a deep dive. So I would say it is definitely a journalist, but at least one or two places of specialization expertise so that you can roll your sleeves up and get in and show uh, that also helps you, uh, you know, in stay in touch and also be able to guide people far more effectively is what I would say. Got it. Super helpful. Um, so guys, um, uh, we'll now move into the, uh, I've got one question for Aditi uh, and then we'll kind of move into uh, the audience uh, questions. Uh, so quick note to the audience, obviously we want to kind of make sure that this session is useful to you and you've got some uh, key takeaways, um, uh, right? So please feel free to kind of write in your questions and um, uh, using the chat box and between me and Aditi, we'll kind of um, curate some of these questions and put it up to uh, the panelists, uh, right? So Aditi, uh, uh, you know, it looks to me like, and I'm going to kind of talk specifically in the context of uh, finance professionals who are at the early stage of their career or possibly at a at a, at a mid level uh, it looks like if they have a specialist profile um, they may be attractive to a fewer number of companies but you know probably with a higher uh, chance that they may kind of get called in for an interview uh, whereas say somebody with a more generalist profile where it could be attractive to a, a larger base of companies uh, but possibly they've got a lower probability of being called in for an interview so as someone who leads uh, the recruitment uh, along with Valentino at uh, practice, I mean, how do you view uh, this trade off uh, for candidates? Uh, so I think uh, Vinkar that uh, so over the time that I've been uh, part of HR, right? The way uh, HR itself looks at hiring uh, candidates has seen quite a shift. So I remember a time when uh, we used to be very specific about which industry did a person come from. Uh, but over time, like the panelists also said, uh, the view has kind of shifted. So it's not just about uh, the current role that you're doing. Uh, it's more about uh, your potential to do a different role is what gets evaluated. Uh, so I think as uh, HR also, even uh, irrespective of person being a, a specialist or a generalist, I think uh, we are more open to evaluating people uh, who are switching industries. Uh, so when I talk about, uh, uh, I'm specifically talking about industry specialization here. Uh, so we are still we are more open to get uh, you know uh, skills matched and attitude matched rather than just uh, the industry that you belong to. Um, whereas maybe uh, uh, as HR probably it's uh, more tactical of us, uh, but when we try to do like a functional uh, match, so uh, uh, the tendency is to look at more generalist profiles because uh, we try to get the width of experience in uh, into a role. Uh, so yes, uh, it still exists that uh, maybe uh, the probability to get for a generalist to get a call, uh, you know, for a uh, uh, has a more of an opportunity to get a call from the industry versus someone who's uh, doing a specialist role. Uh, 
what I believe is that uh, for a good candidate, uh, it is very important to get a, a very strong grasp of fundamentals, uh, to have a strong foundation. Uh, then the trade off becomes a bit more easier for them. Uh, and I feel that opportunities now uh, exist for both, irrespective of what option you choose or which path you take. Uh, like the panelists also said, uh, I think the right attitude is what uh, really makes a difference uh, in making this cut. And uh, uh, so between my between two uh, companies, I compare both Kotak and practice. Uh, I think what uh, was important uh, as HR people was that we were willing to bet on people. Uh, now, when we when I, when I say bet on people, uh, we try to see people who have a hunger to learn. And uh, that learning and how you apply that learning in your career uh, can be uh, in two ways. One is right uh, where you experience something uh, through the functional roles that you're playing. Uh, and the other one is where you're learning from others. So uh, uh, like Deepal also mentioned, right, you have a team that uh, uh, will have the uh, depth of knowledge, whereas you might have the width of knowledge. Uh, so I think it's basically about how, uh, you know, you uh, apply what you have learned uh, in your in your earlier career to uh, you know make that trade off. Understood. Got it. So if if we can probably put the uh, uh, panelists through a bit of a rapid fire, right? Uh, and I'll probably start with uh, you first, Baiba. I mean, if there is one specialization uh, within finance that you think is going to be like a hot career requirement uh, from the industry over the next three years, uh, what would that one specialization be within finance? So I think FP and the financial planning and analysis gives the whole view of the business, which will help in accelerating the career. Got it. Mohita? To me, it's about the, uh, the profitability aspect, uh, which is talking about from commercial as well as business profitability. How do we really help business improve profitability is the space that I think is going to be very, very valuable. Right, uh, Deepal. Uh, I would uh, kind of uh, say that instead of FPNA, I would say B, uh, BPNA. So it's it's wider because there's so much data available. So business, uh, you know, rather than just financial planning and analysis, I think business planning and analysis is where I think uh, the future lies. Uh, you know, getting giving insights, uh, giving ability to kind of uh, go beyond finance to give much wider. Uh, uh, use of data, you know. Got it. So this seems to be, I think all, all three panelists seem to be saying that ability to partner with the business, uh, be able to come up with the right metrics, uh, measure and monitor performance and telling the business as to what could potentially be done better uh, seems to be like the single biggest uh, specialization. Also from an industry uh, aspect, you know, are there any sunrise industries that you think that, you know, maybe in the next three years, uh, if you kind of hitch on to this industry, then your career growth is going to be uh, much faster uh, than being in some of the older industries. Uh, Deepal, if I can start with you first. Yeah, so I think um, um, logistics, I'm sorry, I'm I'm being a little skewed, but yeah, logistics continues to be quite interesting in space, you know. Uh, it's at a very nascent stage. I think lots more both in India and globally, it needs to achieve. It's still primarily brick and mortar and a lot of work to be done to get digital. So there's a lot of work for finance as well there. That, that's obviously one area. Um, secondly, I think um, um, across, I think um, a good startup culture, you know, I think very risky for some finance for early in the days, but I think uh, uh, innovation, you know, pro, uh, you know, businesses which, you know, break traditional, you know, uh, businesses are our areas to kind of really think through, right? I mean, uh, so we saw earlier, uh, you know, Rahul actually moving into Swiggy, which, you know, we all know is, 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 is uh, started a very different path. So I think um, being being futuristic is about also taking some risk and, and looking at, at up, up sunrise industries, which probably emanate from startups uh, as well, you know? Uh, so that's what I would, I would suggest. Technology, of course. So these are some thoughts that I have. Got it. Uh, Mohita, your bet on a sunrise industry that will be in demand? So I would agree that it's logistics and e-commerce, which is actually, uh, you know, something which is going to be the, the, the new sunrise or 
the new aspect where a lot focus will be. Having said that, uh, you know, the manufacturing is there to stay. So, and how do you really, and manufacturing has a lot to do with logistics and e-commerce today. So I think that's the space where India would shine. Got it, Vaibha? Yeah, so my answer is biased towards healthcare. <clears throat> and there is a reason to it is that all these industries, what we talk about is at some level of maturity, but if you talk about healthcare per capita or healthcare, healthcare spend per capita or access to a quality healthcare, we are still at a nascent stage. And though, uh, though our GDP growth is phenomenal, though we are the fifth largest economy and all, but in uh, end healthcare delivery platform, uh, we are not near to other countries which are much smaller than our size and also my bet is on healthcare which is tech driven in the near future next three four years we'll see tremendous change and i can correlate the industry healthcare industry as of now versus 99 2000 of telecom industry that once you add up the tower you'll get the capacity once you add up the tower you'll get the subscriber i think healthcare is also at the similar stage if we start penetrating enough with good quality healthcare in tier two tier three in tier four places uh, possibilities are immense and now if you see uh, national health mission and ayushman bharat scheme and all i feel that this is the industry which should be washed out at least in india for next uh, next decade i would say got it thank you Weber. so the house view uh, from practice on um, uh, some broad guidelines of uh, how some of you could possibly decide which industries to go after. So I would recommend you look at these trends. Uh, one is look at where the cash is going, right? So if you look at your private equity and uh, venture capital activity, uh, what are the types of industries or companies that the uh, the PVC funds are kind of putting their money in, right? Because this is obviously informed money. It's professionally managed money. Uh, so where is their money going? It will give you an indication of uh, which industries you could be potentially looking to make a career in. Secondly, look for underpenetrated industries, uh, right? So uh, uh, I think both uh, e-commerce and uh, healthcare services, organized healthcare services are probably probably case in point uh, where uh, uh, the uh, the availability of services is still uh, extremely underpenetrated. Like right? e-commerce, I believe the percentage is still less than 10 percent of all consumption that happens in India is via e-commerce. So while you know the flip cards and Amazons could look huge. Uh, I mean, in terms of whether they can become huger, uh, probably the answer is still a resounding yes. And finally, look for businesses that are consolidating, right? So if you look at logistics, uh, for instance, I mean, it has been a business that was traditionally managed in a very, uh, very Lala company type, right? Where there are thousands and thousands of small operators, but then you started seeing consolidation where the bigger players, the more professionally managed players, the people who could attract the capital, adopt technology started to gobble up the small, smaller players. So businesses uh, that are uh, ripe for consolidation are also very good businesses for you to kind of try and make your career in. Yeah. Uh, what you should possibly kind of stay away from is industries that are heavily dependent on government regulation uh, because you, you don't know which way it's going to blow. And, uh, you know, it can be a make or break. Obviously, if you're kind of uh, in an industry where the government is currently backing, possibly you'll do very well. But equally, there's a risk that it could kind of come down very quickly. Uh, I can see a question from Akash Mahale. And the question for the panel, and uh, this is an interesting question. I, I, probably, Mohita, you should be taking this up. Is Does creativity take a hit in being a generalist over a specialist? I, I saw that question, and Akash, really, it is an interesting question. And uh, Venka, thanks for putting me on the spot for this one. I'm someone who believes a lot in creativity, and I personally believe that I'm quite creative. It's a feedback that I've received over the years as well. So uh, the question that I have or the way I look at it is to say that, you know, what are you want to be creative for? If you want to be creative to do solutioning, then it doesn't matter whether you're a generalist or a specialist. It's about creativity for something. And I think it's applicable in both the spaces. To me, I don't think it takes a beating ever because whatever you're doing, you're finding solutions and you can be creative as creative as, as you can be in that space. That's my answer. Got it, Baibu, do you want to add on to that? No, I would uh, say creativity, uh, journalist versus a specialist, 
there is some sort of correlation because once you go depth, you uh, you can think in a different or a multiple ways. But once you are just managing the things and all, definitely it will be having some implication on creativity. But it depends on an individual how he is tackling those situation. I would say. Okay, Deepan. I think uh, creativity is everywhere. I think uh, it's unfair to say whether it's in a general role or the only difference here is that um, when you're in a general role versus a specific role, the canvas is bigger. I mean, you could have creativity in terms of adding value to business. You could have creativity in specific uh, uh, other areas of, of, of the finance function. So so I think uh, in um, the canvas gets a little wider. So I'm sure I think, uh, but creativity is is everywhere. I think I mean uh, it's an opportunity that that you can use uh, to to be creative in any field, any apart uh, in any situation. So it's not restricted to to. I don't see it's borderless. I I, I believe creativity is completely borderless. I, that's how I see it. Right. So you know my my own perspective on this uh, is you know I couldn't agree more uh, with the panelists. Uh, so I think Akash that. Uh, I'll give you two examples from Tata Group companies, right? I mean, uh, Indian hotels, for example, were very innovative in terms of the uh, corporate finance structures they have kind of put in place to uh, to organize funding at the lowest possible rates, right? So it's it's a very specialist kind of a role, uh, but they've been very creative in, and very legal uh, in terms of the way uh, in which they've put together the structures, okay, in order to attract funding at the right rates. But if you look at, say, somebody like a Tata Sky, for example, where Samba is the CFO, the way they have leveraged uh, robotic process automation uh, to maximize uh, customer satisfaction, okay, not necessarily a finance thing, you know, but how does a CFO kind of leverage technology in order to impact the lives of the consumer? They've been very creative on that front, uh, you know, so, and, and he's, he's obviously a generalist, uh, right? Uh, so I think this really kind of depends on, on, on your mindset. I, I think, you know, if you want to add value, it doesn't really matter whether you're a specialist or a generalist, you will find a way of uh, adding value to the business. I can see a question that uh, uh, that Niharika Verma is asking. Does being a generalist help in gauging different perspectives better in the longer run? Uh, Deepal, do you want to take that? Sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? I got... Uh, yeah, does uh, being a generalist help in gauging different perspectives better in the longer run? Yes, of course, because the canvas is much wider, right? So I think um, um, your touch points are wider. So yes, I I, I can I, I may agree with with that statement. Yeah, the answer is yes. Got it. Uh, if I can uh, put you a little bit on the spot, uh, Vishal, right? I mean, uh, you started off being a a finance professional. Okay, when you added the HR component to your role. I mean, did you did you find that it kind of enhanced your perspectives beyond uh, what you were doing earlier? I mean, if you were you were trying to solve the same problem, let's say five years back and today, I mean, has the addition of the HR function helped you to kind of view that uh, problem in in a, in a different light? Yeah. So, in my opinion, yes, that has really helped me in solving the problem and giving a more holistic picture. Uh, so. At the start of the conversation itself, I have told that what we see are the numbers, but who delivers that number is the people. So that people angle was very, very strong. And uh, sometimes because of our overall education, qualification, and I would say upbringing in as a CA or as a finance role, we just see the numbers. We just see the numbers how but we don't see what is going beyond those numbers and how those numbers are getting delivered. Uh, sometimes we are more transactional in nature and we don't look for a long term implication of those results, be it cost cutting, be it staff rationalization, be it taking uh, taking of various matters. So I think HR as a function has helped me in looking what is tangible and what is intangible and trying to co correlate those things while taking an informed decision. Uh, so that has really helped me. I would say I can't define it uh, with uh, any specific thing, but when I take any financials decision or when I take any commercial decision, I think I just see that what is the business implication of it and what is how people will feel about it. And if sometimes I feel that 
optics are more important than reality i'll keep those optics there so that people will feel uh, secure or people will not feel insecure about certain things got it uh, before i bring in mohita uh, for your perspective in the question a quick check with the audience if you you got another 10 minutes if you'd like to ask any questions you can possibly take one or two more uh, else we'll commence with the summing up uh, once mohita has done so uh, i would say that yes it does give you a better perspective in the long run. However, it's a question of zooming in and zooming out to me. So the ability to zoom in as, because when you start your career, you will not really start as a journalist. You will start in doing one thing, getting to it, some depth of it, and then moving on to something else. So those two years or two and a half years that you spend in each role, that will give you the perspective to zoom in and zoom out. And as you grow or as you expand, doing different roles, your ability to connect the dots and be able to see the larger picture is what will really add value. So you may start as a one role, one role specialist, but your ability to do multiple roles and be able to connect dots is what will help you. Uh, so even if as a as a CFO, as you look at it as a journalist, you wouldn't have done one aspect, late, let's say maybe, but you still we are able to connect the dots when you zoom in and zoom out, I think that is also very, very valuable to me. Venkat, Deepal, if I may just, you know, one sure. small example hit my uh, head. Um, I was just thinking when I was a CFO way back, um, when I, the way I used to deal with budget and with salespeople was very different after I started doing sales myself as a CEO and then going back now to being a CFO. The perspectives are very wide and very different, you know. So I think as you go up and you become more generalist, your 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 horizon really widens. You understand it's 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 about understanding businesses, having a little bit of empathy also in terms of you know the the whole perspective definitely changes and it's much wider. I, I I'm I'm sure about this. Sure. Yeah. In the cost of being an HR professional, uh, you know, I'm going to say that. The more you have diversity within the teams, it's not only gender diversity I'm talking about, but sure. overall diversity helps you bring up perspectives. And any situation that you are in, if you evaluate that from different perspectives by talking to different people who have different exposures, you can always build up your perspectives irrespective of where you are. Very well said, Mohit. I, I completely agree with this point that uh, in terms of mindset, in terms of not not only gender diversity, but diverse view about the same problem, same situation really helps. Uh, so I completely agree because in team also you require certain conservative people, certain aggressive people, certain more assertive people, and that's how that entire team complements for each other. Got it. Excellent. So I don't see uh, Ajit, there are no further questions on the chat, right? <clears throat> no. Perfect. So we'll probably kind of, uh, I'll take a stab at summing up. Um, uh, fantastic session, um, a lot of learnings, I'm sure for all of us. Uh, I made some notes uh, in, in no particular order of uh, importance. Uh, firstly, I think the, the point that came out very clearly is uh, the question is probably uh, not as to, so incidentally, I mean, just a, a trivia um, or a fact nugget for you. So to be or not to be is, is, is from Shakespeare. Uh, it's from a play called Hamlet. And it's a question that uh, Prince Hamlet asks uh, in, I don't know if you are any of you are Shakespeare boss, it's called the nunnery scene. It's kind of very, uh, very popular among people who kind of follow English literature, plays, etc. Uh, right. And of course, he asks it in, a, in an extremely dark uh, kind of a situation because the question is, you know, he he's kind of contemplating between suicide and death. Uh, anyway, at least for, for us, when we're talking about generalists and specialists, it's obviously in a in a much more positive uh, uh, note. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, all the panelists seem to agree that um, you know it it uh, the question of whether you want to be a generalist or specialist, which is better, uh, has got to be seen in the context of. It's, it's a relative context of what is your definition of success in life professionally, uh, right? There's no absolute answer as to which route is better. Uh, if you're aspiring possibly for a CFO role, um, it looks like you will kind of eventually need to kind of become a generalist. Uh, however, if your definition of success that you is that you want to be like a sub-functional specialist, if you want to be like um, a head of business finance, head of treasury, 
head of MND, head of corporate finance uh, in, in, in a large corporate, then I think you will you'll obviously kind of go down the uh, specialist route. I thought that um, Mohita kind of very interestingly uh, brought up a parallel uh, comparison from the research and development uh, function, right? Uh, you know, our panelists also kind of um, uh, looked at some other perspectives, like, you know, if you are somebody who naturally likes people, uh, who feels more comfortable uh, in managing larger groups, uh, if if you like cross-functional interactions, then you're possibly kind of made uh, for, uh, for for to eventually become a generalist. If on the other hand, if you're somebody who prefers depth rather than spread, uh, you're more focused on the quality uh, of the solutioning rather than the application of the solutioning, then you're possibly kind of better suited off uh, as a uh, specialist. Uh, what also came across from all the panelists is that eventually uh, there is no substitute for two things. A, whatever role you do, you've got to be really good at it. It doesn't matter whether you're a generalist or a specialist. And second, uh, again, all three panelists agreed on this, is that you have to define how what is the value that you're adding to the business. Any role, as long as it is, it is relevant and is valuable to the business, you will do well in your career. Uh, we also debated uh, the impact of timing on your decision. So those of you, uh, and you know, I'll talk about this because we are really kind of a CFO company. Um, if your if your definition of success is that you want to be a CFO or a CEO, then I think you will need to become a generalist at some point of time. Uh, the question is not if you will become a generalist, but really more when. Uh, you will become a generalist. Uh, Vaibhav got up, uh, got out a very nice uh, analogy with the film industry. Uh, and this is probably true when we were growing up, uh, right? I mean, you looked at uh, somebody like Prem Chopra, you knew that he had to be a villain. Uh, I think fortunately, actors of today are a little bit more, uh, you know, they're not slotted uh, into these kind of roles. But I think it's a, it's a risk. Uh, right, that um, sometimes if you kind of stick on to one industry uh, or one subfunction for too long, are you going to get slotted as being good only over there? It's a, it's a perception risk. It may not necessarily be real. But equally, we also got a lot of comfort from what Deepal was saying, where he said that, look, you know, the days where uh, cross-industry or cross-functional moves were frowned upon uh, or were not treated very favorably is clearly gone. Uh, what companies are now looking for, and I think Mohita amplified this point, uh, when she said that what are your learnings from the past and what is your track record in implementing those learnings in practical situations is possibly what companies are looking for, right? And all the panelists agreed that candidates are really being hired for their attitude uh, as long as you are somebody who's willing to learn and the companies feel confident that you will be able to go and figure out a solution, uh, then whether you've been in that specific situation before or not is possibly less relevant, right? Uh, I, my perspective on the specialization is that, see, all of us have got flavors in our CV, uh, right? I mean, we may not necessarily be specialized in that area, right? So, uh, I mean, from my own example, I think what is very, a uh, very strong flavor in my CV is business finance, you know, but am I a business finance specialist? You know, probably my answer would be no, right? So if you take a look at anybody's CV, you will find that there will be some flavors. I mean, especially if you have been working, you've got a career of say 15, 20 years, you will find that we naturally kind of gravitate towards certain sub-functions because we feel comfortable about it, uh, right? We enjoy it. I mean, you, it doesn't matter how complex the business finance problem is, I'll never get tired, right? Because I'm passionate uh, about that sub-flavor, right? So discover that flavor. I think all, all of our panelists agreed that you know choose your passion you've got to be happy in the sub function that you're currently uh, uh, working with um in terms of the uh, areas of specialization that will be in demand and i think this is very important for young professionals uh, on this group who are kind of planning the next uh, three years journey uh, all three panelists agreed that it is a business finance business partnering role ability to not just crunch numbers, but ability to kind of draw out insights from the numbers to tell the business as to what is a call to action uh, is what came out as a critical skill that will continue to be in demand in the next three years. Uh, from, from an industry standpoint, uh, you know, all the three panelists were completely loyal to their respective industries, uh, right? Deepal thought that it is uh, logistics that will be in demand. Um, uh, Vaiva thought it will be uh, healthcare. And um, uh, Mohita, well, she conceded that maybe e-commerce uh, could be in demand. She also batted for manufacturing to say that, look, manufacturing is not going away anywhere, uh, right? So uh, my own perspective on this is follow the cash, uh, see where the money is going in from the PEVC ecosystem. Uh, maybe that's a good indication of what uh, carriers could be in uh, demand going forward. Yeah, so those... Uh, uh, you know, those were really kind of my takeaways from today's session. Uh, I want to quickly check with the panelists if they have any closing thoughts for maybe one minute each.
Mohita, you want to go first? I think you beautifully summarized Venkat, so and there are no more thoughts there. I think that's that's very very. Thank you for being, you know, thank you for summarizing it so well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mohita. Vaiba. No, no. I think Venkat, uh, you have summarized it very well, and thanks for it. And I would say it was great interaction with Venkat, Mohita, Deepal, and Aditi. Uh, hearing all the views and all, and understanding what's going on, and and it's it's a uh, this entire topic when you have brought it up as first time has hit me. It is a, a specialized versus a generalist role because the way. I have started my career. It's more about the problems which I am facing. I was keep on solving those problems for the challenges which are thrown at me. We were keep on solving those, but uh, it has spent considerable time in understanding that uh, what it is, how it is and how it has to be done and quite an enriching discussion with cross functional cross industry experts. So thanks for arranging that and.